That's a genuinely amazing place to start. Opening gun barrel, classic. Weird, actually, because it's um, in much higher quality than the first one, even though it's the same recording. Exactly. I, guess that, I, I, I think it is. It looks exactly the same. It also has, like, the classic theme, not the... Beep, boop, boop, beep. Yeah, yeah, that's why it's inferior, though, because it doesn't have the... Beep, boop, uh, and then we get our first pre tile sequence. Oh. <laughs> and it's uh, fantastic. When I was watching it, and I could see... Well, it, it's supposed to be Bond. You're meant to think that at first. It, it was bizarre, because he's weirdly wearing a lot of makeup and like lipstick yeah. and it's odd and i was gonna be like i was like is, is it just because it's nice and they wanted it to show up better um not just that which is the first giveaway that it's not actually bond but his his mannerisms and the way he holds himself and moves are completely different to how he does when he's bond like yeah, he's like so bond, nervous yeah Exactly. When he's Bond, he's so confident in it. I, I mentioned that in the Doctor No review. Is he just breathes Bond? He he just is Bond. He's so comfortable in that role. But the role he's playing here, like the fake Bond, he's so uncomfortable and like nervous in his movements. Aren't the same. It's great. I don't remember ever like when I first saw this movie as a kid. I don't remember being surprised by this. But I guess I would have been. But I think if I was like my age now, seeing the movie for the first time in 1963. I've been like, whoa. They like to do like the, a kill right at the beginning of the movie to set the stakes, I guess, because they did it with the strange ways in the last movie. But it's just I, it's just like a nice little bit of tension to start the movie off, because before yeah. we cut into the titles, you know, and it sort of resets yeah. after the titles to a bit more of a calm state. It seems like on the surface, it seems like pretty insignificant, like that it's just introduced Red Grant, but it also introduces, I guess, his lethality. And yeah. sort of, and and the, obviously it preludes the train fight at the end where yeah. he tries to choke out Bond. And everything happens with the uh, with this yeah. briefcase and everything. So um, we also meet. I mean, this is a bit of an aside, but the guy, like the sort of Spectre head who, on like yeah. Spectre Island, there, the ball guy, tall ball, tall ball guy, is the actor is Walter Cattell, who is. I guess he doesn't come back until. Spy Who Loved Me, maybe? And then he plays a character called General Gogol, who's in a lot of the films. Basically like the uh, KGB leader. Yeah. <laughs> uh, but you know, the Bond franchise loves to reuse his actors. And that happens in this yeah. movie, other instances too, but that's to discuss later on. It's funny how, speaking of how it sort of sets up the rest of the film, even with the fake Bond, it, it sets up how, like, how they do all this training and none of it sort of matters in the end because what they train for like that whole scenario bond is we see later on gets out of it like yeah i just realized it's interesting because like they're fighting james bond but the plot to actually kill bond isn't like thought of until later on right that's when kronstein right? I, yeah i i think it's more just I, I, they presume at some point they might have to kill bond and they know he's Always well, evading. Probably ever that. since Doctor knows death. Yeah. Uh, so that's the pre-title sequence, and then bang into the titles. <laughs> bang. And and the, the the title sequence is done by Robert Brown John. He does like the sort of projection onto like women's bodies and stuff. Yeah. Because I, the guy who did the first one is Morris Bender, who does a lot of the other ones. Oh, okay. Uh, but Robert Brown John just did this one, and then he did Goldfinger. But I really like this style of titles. He's like a lot. I I think it is stylistic, and it's just. I, I love how colourful it is. I loved I, yeah. I loved how Doctor Nose was colourful, but this is like on another level. Sometimes I couldn't read the names because of the like the dancing oh, yeah. and stuff. And I was like I was like squinting, like trying to figure out what it said. Also, as far as I can remember, it's the only Bond intro that's all instrumental and no vocals. Oh really? Uh, I mean there is a vocal version which is played at the end of the movie, which is Matt yeah. Monroe singing, which I like. I mean it sounds very Sinatra. Uh, oh, but yeah, I really like the song, and the instrumentation is fantastic. Uh, and oh, well, first of all, uh, John Barry is doing the score. Uh, Monty Norman only did the score for the first one. The score is a million times better. 
It doesn't oh, yeah, feel definitely. as like heinously dated as Doctor Nose did. <laughs> but 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 there was no free blind mice, so automatically inferior. Okay, so the score was terrible. Yeah, is what I meant to say. Then we then we play chess. Oh yeah, chess. That, okay. that some people probably find really boring, but I enjoyed it. Well, I I love chess, so and I equally find it boring. But um, <laughs> that whole room already had what is, more what is budget. Set? It, yeah, that set is insane. it had more budget than Doctor No combined. Like it was such a huge room, and there were so many extras in it, which you didn't really get in Doctor yeah, No until like, right at the end. Even with Doctor No smaller, like I think what was the budget? A million dollars, I think. Like like Ken Adams knows how to make impressive sets with a tight yeah. budget but now that he has a bigger budget he can go all out you know it's like yeah that is well speaking of scenes that sort of set up the rest of the film because during sort of that cold war era another sort of competitive nature to america and russia was chess um i loved <laughs> that huge board like with the chess <laughs> oh yeah they were I, showing yeah 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 i mean they, they have those anyway when they do uh chess matches like like you know proper competitions but it, that was on another level i don't know what that was you meet kronzi and they have a fun little thing with the with a coaster or the napkin or whatever and it says you're required at once <laughs> the spectre yeah. logo I, uh, I like that because it makes it seem like it's mysterious and it's like nobody else saw him get that message it was like really secretive but like it was everybody was watching him can you imagine like everybody watching going He's looking at a napkin. He's definitely cheating. Yeah, so that it introduces Kronstein, but like it doesn't really. I guess we're just meant to think that he's like a genius or something. I don't know what like character-wise that does for us. The fact that he beats the guy in chess. I, I guess mean, maybe he's a strategist. That's his role. So yeah, yeah, that that's probably because I mean, not necessarily a genius because uh, you can be an <laughs> idiot and be good at chess. I'm an idiot and I'm bad at chess, but that's different. So okay, so then he goes he he goes to the boat where Blofeld is hanging out. The Siamese fighting fish. <laughs> uh, I had, I had uh, no idea what that that was. I I guess that was also like an allegory, but I, I didn't for them know. for for Cleb and Kronstein. Oh, uh, that makes sense actually. I always prefer Blofeld. Like I think every time we've seen Blofeld face to face, it's not worked. <laughs> I mean, I think. I, Keeping him in the shadows is so much more effective. I mean, he's not—he doesn't intimidate me in this movie, but it's still more effective than obviously yeah. the Crystal Bolts Inspector. But that's you know. You, but do you like um, on 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 Doctor No? Like when when you're first introduced to him, he's also sort of in the shadows in that scene where. Yeah. And you enjoyed that, so I I can see why you'd enjoy this as well. And it is but, but that really but that thrill. scene. That scene is far more effective. Like the tarantula scene, Doctor No is a far more effective introduction to a villain. Yeah, but he's the main villain, Doctor No. Like Blofeld is just pulling the strings. You know, he's just yeah. Palpatine. <laughs> yeah, I was just say. But the main the main villains are Rosa Klebb, who I really like. Yeah, she's, she seems like that sort of Kate, the cornered rat sort of thing. Like she's she's not this like she's only recently become part of Spectre. She was part of you know the Russian government, Smash yeah. or whatever. It, it's like she has a lot to prove as well. Exactly. It, and then that's also interesting because it informs like decisions that she ends up making in the movie. She's set up in the Blofeld scene, and then her first proper scene is where we were introduced to the Bond girl, Tatiana Romanova, in the, who's a cipher clerk at the Russian consulate. Let's talk about the plan, the Spectre plan. Okay. Which is a little convoluted, but basically, they're, they're, the whole point is basically revenge against Bond for the death of Dr. No. Yeah. Uh, and to humiliate MI6. Uh, um, so I mentioned we introduced Tatiana. And what were your first impressions of her? Because I, I like her. Uh, my first impressions were Get a Life. Um, <laughs> she's very weirdly obsessed with Bond. Like, I I don't know. I think that's a weird no, no, thing no, no, to no. go but she, No, she, she isn't, though. She isn't obsessed with Bond. At least that's what I take away. I take away that it's all... Like, it's all a performance I, initially. Uh, yeah, I, I couldn't tell if it was like meant to be an act at first and then she does fall for him, or if it was always an act or if she had just it, it was all true I, it was i think very clearly up front the whole point is she's acting you know the, the whole you know you look at this picture of james bond try to fall in love like pretend you're falling in love with him and we're gonna get yeah. over here have to you know play this game with him but i think by the time of the train scene when she's like oh i love you james i love you i love yeah. you <laughs> you know i can't it's it's really impossible to tell if that's sincere or not and i don't know if that's just her acting 
or like yeah. that's intentional. I think, but by the end of the movie, I think definitely she's turned to him. Obviously. Speaking of her acting, there is the other caveat that her lines are dubbed by the same person who dubbed Honey Rider. It's not Nikki Vandersil. No, I don't think. I'm lying then. But Nikki Vandersil is does return to do Sylvia Trench again. <laughs> oh, that's what I mean. Because then. the woman, but Tatiana has an accent. But I never the dubbing for her doesn't really bother me that much. So there's yeah. So the scene with her in ta- in the Rosa Club is kind of really a little not not cringy, but it's just awkward. But that's intentional. Like there's this weird sort of lesbianism thing going on. There's like the lesbian sort of because I, I, it's implied that Rosa Club is a lesbian, or at least she's like using that as like to sort of tease Tatiana. You know, she's like grabbing her leg and like oh, turn around, and then they contact MI6 and they say that this Russian cipher clerk has fallen in love with the picture of James Bond. She's gonna defect essentially and get them the decoder. That's the yeah. whole thing. That's the that's the bait. But then we cut to the English countryside with Bond and his first and only, well, not only, but his first returning girlfriend, Sylvia Trench. I I like the idea that when he was talking to um, Money Penny on the phone, he immediately like denounced that he was even with another woman and that there's any other woman when she's right there. How do you feel about that as as an introduction to Bond, reintroduction reintroduction to Bond? It's nowhere near as good as his introduction in Doctor No, but I don't know how... There isn't a single one. There's only a few that come close to that, but not even really. I like to think that he literally has women on standby constantly, and they just wait by the phone. Yeah, and he tells every one of them that it's only, like, they're the only ones he has anything to do with even though they're all there together and know for a fact that's not true but they don't care it's like a phone for each fucking woman <laughs> yeah yeah you know how you see his apartment in dr no like <laughs> like if you saw it now they'd just be you couldn't walk in it because there's just the phones galore uh, does it come to the next movie phony galore uh, okay, phony well, galore uh so then what back to my six right oh yeah because then we have the queue scene not just this scene, but like the next few, well, I guess next couple of scenes, like there are a sequence that's just sort of a sequel and also a recreation of the scene from Doctor No, where he goes oh, it's like it. beat for beat. Q yeah. walks in, gets a gadget, brief talk with them, cut to a plane landing in an airport, <laughs> airport scene. It's the exact same beat for beat, but I think it's better than Doctor No. <laughs> I don't know because well, in Doctor No, he gets his gun, which is cool, but in this we get he gets like a proper gadget. It's a whole bunch of like there's a whole bunch of gadgets in one because the briefcase itself has the knife come out of it. It has the fifty gold sovereigns in each side. It and has then doesn't it have more fifty thing. gold sovereigns somewhere else in like each, a, in each strap? In each strap, there's fifty gold. Yeah. Sovereigns. Uh, there's talcum powder bomb, and then inside it is the the folding sniper rifle, which is awesome. Love that. Oh yeah, that's great. They have this sort of problem with Bond gadgets a lot of the times where they introduce it. At the beginning of the film, and then it would, it's like some really obscure need later on in the film. Like, yeah. But this doesn't really have that. Like, the so, rifle, it makes sense when he would use it. You know, everything, like, it seems like it could be applied to different situations, you know, several different situations, as opposed to it only being useful for one thing. So, what we're saying is, in, in this one, it is sort of like an actual spy's, like, sort of casual yeah. gadget, whereas in the rest of the movies, it's a mouse tool. There's the also him with. Money Penny again, which is a great scene that just more expansion of how this the scene went in Doctor No between them, where they've got so much chemistry. But yeah, when when he leaves, obviously writes on the um the postcard with love from Russia because the title of the film was With Love from Russia. All right, so, so then no, I love it. Reused reused Doctor No scenes, fly to Istanbul, love that location classic Bond location, but then we get our Bond ally in this movie, Karen Bay, who is my favorite Bond ally of the whole series. Oh, he's great. He's um, so charming and fun and personable. I love it. I loved I, I loved the implication that he said that everybody who worked for him was his son. Are they actually his sons, or, or did it just turn out that he just thought of them all as, as his son? I interpreted it that they were actually his kids, but I guess, I mean, obviously his whole staff can't be his kids. <laughs> I mean... No, because they all look kind of look... I, I don't I mean, that sounds a bit bad. They all look the same, but they all, like, they have, like, a mustache. Yeah, yeah, yeah. They, 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 I, I'd say they are visually meant to look like him. Uh, I think the relationship that Karim and Bond have is 
actually genuine in this and you feel like they're friends by the end yeah. by the time he passes away and it actually resonates whereas with quarrel his death that was very clunky to me and i don't think they really they were particularly good like chemistry wise him and doc and him and bond you know no you needed more scenes they're actually bond, friends i think even though i liked him so me karen bay there's the there's the bit with uh the coffee they have a cup of coffee together and they have a nice jovial discussion and then bond goes back to the hotel and we have another retreaded scene from dr no yeah uh, I, I think he has a drink, right? Is it, doesn't he have a martini, I think? Shake not served. Uh, yeah, and then is the, it the first time they say it? He didn't say in Dr. No, did he? I don't remember him having that in Dr. No. I could be wrong. But then the bombing happens. In the first time when it happens, does it do all that, like, multicolored flash? Yeah, it's like purple, and there's some weird rave going on, and everything explodes. <laughs> yeah. Well, he busts his arm. And that's in a slang for the rest of the movie. Bond shows up. Uh, and then we, then Krilenko, or Krilenko, <laughs> Karen Bay is like, uh, this is weird for them to break our sort of pact, you know, for the Russians to do this. So then they go under reservoirs underneath Istanbul, uh, where they often go to like sort of spy, they have like a periscope sort of thing in the Russian like uh, office. I, I loved all of that. I did, it made no sense. It was all absolutely bizarre and I just loved all of it. This is a stretch but i love the, the rats and then connery makes a comment about rats and i was like oh that's like this is how they established they doesn't like rats for the last crusade <laughs> uh so they spy like i was i was kind of watching it this time like where is like that periscope coming out to the office you know <laughs> i have i have no idea how that was meant to work it like defied physics it was disguised like a mouse hole it was disguised as a robotic mouse tatiana comes in that's the first time bond sees tatiana just her legs <laughs> Yeah, well, because that's pretty much what it is, is to introduce Tatiana to him. That scene is a gypsy camp. Why does Karim go to the gypsy camp? Full disclosure, when it came to that scene, that scene I, it was the worst part of the movie for me. I, I, it was like filler. <laughs> I don't know what it was. But then the fight was really good. And then I, and then I paused it after that because I was like, okay, this was a really good fight after a kind of pause scene. So I'll, I'll, I'll come back to it. And then, and then I did. And then... It, 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 and then it continues to be a good movie, but um, I like the Gypsy Camp stuff until the fight, yeah. not the like the assault, like the like the the cat fight for the for the, the yeah that uh, part the husband. No, that that part no bueno, but the the actual gun fight I, I enjoy. Yeah, I like Bond being put in this unfamiliar situation because, it, and then he's like he quickly befriends like the Gypsy like leader, and it's just yeah. it's cool. So then Krilenko shows up, and that is a great fight scene. I mean, it's not really the most impressively choreographed, but there's like, oh, there's a lot going on. Karam knows that Krilenko led that assault. I, the, the next I, bit is the sniper scene. So that they I, know that Krilenko led assault, so, so Karam's like, time to kill Krilenko once and for all. I love that scene. I, I love the idea of them propping each other up. Again, that's like sort of goes along with bonding moments. Like, it, it shows that they have common ground and common interest and you know i don't know I, I i just enjoyed that sort of character building really it's just meant for karam's development i guess because i guess well after after that bond goes back to his hotel and then we meet tatiana again that's when they first have that's a, they have that very famous scene bond shows up uh takes off his clothes to go in the shower and then he hears a noise in his bedroom and it's tatiana wiggling around <laughs> in the bed <laughs> Well, he walks in and, and then, oh, you're Tatiana Romanova, yada, yada, yada. Uh, and they meet, they meet face to face for the first time. At the end of that, you know, they start making out and then there's the cuts to behind the mirror where Rosa Klebb is filming them. On definitely at the end of it all, like, made a million copies of the tape and... Yeah, put him on his OnlyFans. <laughs> yeah, exactly. I, th I think I told you this before, I, I definitely have, but this scene is always used to test Bond actors. Why? So, I don't know, because they have like a romance chemistry scene. They do an action scene. I don't know why they picked the scene to I guess it shows your physique on screen because he has a shirt off. It shows the chemistry with a lady. But you can see well, you, can, you can see some test screenings of this particular scene. You can see Sam Neill's when he was testing for Octopussy. Very, you can see like a little clip of it online. You can see the entirety of James Brolin's who's also testing for Octopussy. Uh, you can see a bit of Daniel Craig's. But yeah, I know they always use this scene. The next scene is the next day at the monastery, the mosque at St. Sophia. Uh, that scene really confuses the hell out of me because the people at play in that scene, there's Bond, Tatiana, there's Red Grant, there's that guy with the beret, the glass and the mustache, who looks like one of the Marx Brothers. <laughs> he does as well. He's introduced at the airport early on. He's basically in the Felix Leiter creeping around thing. 
actually, now that we're talking about it, so when they first showed him in the airport, so they show Bond come out, get in the car, like, and it's like guy in a suit, Bond. Then you see yeah. that guy in the background, and he literally, he does look like, like Groucho Marx. Yeah, it does. I, yeah, absolutely. And I didn't, I thought what was going to happen was that it was going to turn out that the person who got in the car wasn't Bond, it was a decoy, and that that was actually Bond dressed up. I don't think I don't understand his role at all because no, I, I don't he's actually. I think he's an ally because at, yeah. the, at on a story later on, he's killed by Red Grant. He has a map of the consulate because I think he's the contact for Bond in that scene, right? Because the whole point of, the, of that scene is that they're getting a map of the consulate that I think yeah. Tatiana set up. So he has the map. Red Grant kills him. He leaves the map on his body, and then Bond shows up and takes the map from him. I, that, that scene does not flow for me at all. I don't no, understand. It doesn't, his, his alignment doesn't make sense. It's not articulated very well. But the whole point of it is that Bond gets the consulate map and then they make the plan to steal the lector on the 13th, no, the 14th, because Bond is superstitious. Bond is superstitious! <laughs> then there's that scene on the ferry where Bond is using the camera to record Tatiana about specifics of the lector. Yeah, it's odd because he's simultaneously recording her and also, it's like a call that they're listening to it, MI6. Yeah, it's like broadcasting it, yeah. She keeps saying flirty stuff to Bond in the middle of it all, and he keeps just like... They're like, look at the camera, talk to the camera. Yeah, he's, he's like trying to be nonchalant about it, and then it keeps coming to MI6, and like, M looks increasingly uncomfortable that like, yeah. all these people it's have to like, listen to this. Tatiana's like, am I as pretty as all those Western girls or something? And then Bond's like, well, once with M in Tokyo. <laughs> and then he cuts off the thing. <laughs> Uh, but the next thing is the actual plan to see the lector when they bomb the consulate. And the guy's like, is that clock right? Russian clocks are always all right, <laughs> or whatever. Yeah. I guess they, they bomb it with tear gas, right? Because bomb comes in with the gas mask on. Yeah, it must have been. No, no, no. Because no. doesn't it, is it tear gas or is it gas that makes people sleep? I think it's tear gas because I don't remember passing out. I think everybody's just running over, running out. So the, what they escape onto the Orient Express then, right? That's when they show up on the Orient Express. Yeah, and then Pyro. No. But you said Orient Express. It is the Orient Express, though. You're kidding. No, I'm not kidding. It is the Orient Express. So then Bond meets Pyro, and we know this is the biggest, most ambitious cinematic crossover in history. Yes. What, it, what what happens in the Orient Express? Bond, you know, knock three times, whatever. Tatiana to let him in. Um, Bond, Bond, Bond and the Doctor on the Orient Express in space, and there is a mummy that kills people, and they have 60 seconds to live before the mummy kills them, and the Doctor's got to figure out what's causing the mummy to appear and why it's killing people. What the fuck? <laughs> this Doctor Who episode. There were many trains to take the name Orient Express, but only one in space. So, Bond, Tatiana, and Karen Bay get on the train they have and, a plan to hop across the border yeah and they have to they have like separate rooms that are also connected in the train and it's just sort of about just basically them getting on the train but also bond having to work around tatiana because he knows she isn't to be trusted yeah they're undercover as mr and mrs somerset is is odd because i don't really understand why they needed the identities because I don't think there's ever a point when they have to properly use them. I guess when they go to the food carriage, but they don't go to the food carriage that we see. So, and Tatiana just keeps obsessing over Bond marrying her when they get back to England. Like I don't know why she even for a second believes that's going to be the case. I don't know if she does believe it or if it's an act or. I mean, because at that at that point, what does she gain from acting like she's in love with him? Because they're already on their way to England. You know? Yeah, exactly. I, I. So I don't think she is acting. No, I don't. I, I, I think she actually does fall in love with Bond because why wouldn't you? Yeah, I, I don't know. I guess, it, I guess, I guess it's where you have to figure out. I don't know why I'm Pokey the pig. That's all, folks. Um, you have to figure out where she's like putting on a show, or where she's actually truthfully she's like on the with Bond. Yeah. There's this very odd thing, though, where from this point on, Bond, I guess because he doesn't really have to try anymore, he absolutely treats her like shit. 
slaps no, up no, not, more than not, yeah, but not woman. until Karam dies. And then, but that's okay. I mean, that's okay. <laughs> that's that's okay. He wasn't. The that's best okay. Character the film. He's immediately thinking, "Oh, she's responsible to some degree." I mean, even after he he knows she isn't, he still treats her like shit. He doesn't. He suspects her the whole time. And why would he not suspect her? Suspect her. Okay, they go for the next station. They contact MI6 because their plans failed, right? Because they need a new plan. And then there's then they're going to meet up at the station after that. A, a contact from MI6, Captain Nash. And then when they get there, Captain well, Nash is off by Red Grant, and Red Grant takes up his identity as Captain oh, Nash. Yes. Okay. There, there is a scene um, when they're first getting on the train where it shows him. He like it shows him get on oh, the yeah. train, then it shows him. Oh, yeah, Red Grant's on the train the whole time. Yeah. 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 But it's, it's only now that he takes advantage of that situation. So okay, so we have Red Grant now masquerading as, as Captain Nash, uh, and I think that he's he's really fun as Captain Nash. He's like this really over the top, you know. <laughs> yeah, I, I, I like uh, it as well because it's almost as if the fact that he's slightly over the top, Bond is weary of it. He, yeah, he yeah. he he figures that something's up with that because I guess he wasn't expecting that sort of person, and maybe they told him it wasn't maybe when they told him about him he like it didn't match up with the description he'd been given yeah and nash says he has a plan to jump off the train they sort of go on their merry way and then they go to dinner in the, in the dining car and this is yeah. where famous red wine with fish scene happens was the fish the hildebrand rarity <sighs> What I hate about that scene, and it's really stupid, he like so obviously drops the pill in her drink when he's pouring it. It's yeah, like, I and Bond's looking right at it. <laughs> Bond's like, this prick. <laughs> what does he think of this? Think of this? Uh, so they bring her back to the car, and then Bond and him start talking. Like, What'd you put in her drink? And then there's the big reveal. Yeah. Pretty quick. I mean, I guess I was, I was kind of hoping they had more of a confrontation where they're like, where he's he doesn't reveal his intentions yeah. or who he is straight away. But I thought there'd be more sort of cat and mouse stuff with that, but it, it just, he ends up launching straight into the fight. Well, not, no, because there's the bit where after he's revealed, he's got Bond at gunpoint. Oh yeah, he sort of... Uh, they yeah. have a conversation there, you know, oh, my escape plan's only for one, and then Bond's like, I'll pay you 50 gold sovereigns in the case. Yeah, and then, because he uses that as the opportunity to trick him into setting off the tear gas. Talking about her. Uh, that's a, that's, that whole scene's like super claustrophobic, which I really like. You know, it's yeah, a, it is. Like, um, it's a tight space. I mean, technically, I can tell that it's not a real train. It's just like, it, it's like a set made to look like a train car, but it's really good, despite the fact that it's not even a real me. I, I like it, though. <laughs> I, I, I liked how claustrophobic it felt and how it's compared to where um, Dr. No ends is that whole lavish elaborate yeah, that massive yeah. massive lab scent. slash spa resort well this isn't the ending though this is the first of like three endings of this movie yeah I know but I I, I, I guess I'm comparing it to that because yeah like you say it's an ending I guess or like an ending location and it's funny because it's really low key so they have and it's, it is a brutal fight like I felt yeah, the punches funny. which I'm surprised about because in a lot of things it's like see, cool, like bluish light on them yeah it's, it's so well shot that that scene is such a great fight um but you and you I think you really feel the punches because sort of media from the 60s I see you do not feel the punches like I, I've watched Doctor Who episode from the 60s where there's like a big fight and like it you can tell nobody's actually hitting each other in this. Yeah, it's but that's just... like, this is a spy movie, though, not Doctor Who. <laughs> no, I know, but I just mean in terms of, like, 60s sensibility yeah. of fight scenes. I don't just mean Doctor I mean a lot of things where, like, the fight, the punches don't hit. And I'd, I'd argue that even, like, today in modern times, some fight scenes feel too floaty and don't have punches hitting. I agree. I like the brutality of it. Yeah, well. I do too. It's like uh, uh, this. This is no way near the same movie, but the nearest it made me think of in terms of how brutal and how you felt it was, you know, in No Way Home when he's fighting the Green Goblin. 
yeah you feel those punches and hear them and it's it, it weirdly reminded me of that scene i think i mean really obviously the craig era has plenty of that not even connery after this has fight scenes like that are rough like that Moore certainly doesn't really dalton does i was gonna say i'm pretty sure dalton does yeah it's a great fight scene and honestly this really feels like the ending of the film and it yeah just a bit drags for me after this because you feel like whoa 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 what's happening and then oh we got more to do <laughs> yeah I, to be honest i think this should have been I, and I, I mean i still view it as this but it should have been the full-on climax and then have the scene yeah. with blowfield to cap it off and I, I think that actually should have been um issue number three yeah, yeah i think so that should have been where she got it i think and then they could have ended the movie they, well, as in they do a bit more with Bomberly and that section there instead of dragging onto the uh, hotel. And then what? the helicopters show up. But I like that scene. And then he snipes. He, he like gets the most insanely lucky shot on the guy's arm and he drops the grenade. His feet. I mean, <laughs> you say lucky again. You on? No, I know he's hacking. I know he was hacking. Yeah, he, he had his game shot on. That's so yeah. That, they... that thing, that thing, like it's pretty like intense and bombastic, but it just feels like we just had an intense scene. So I'm like kind of already exhausted from the last one. It's like you you've had your catharsis of the big fight and you're ready to wind down, but it, it isn't winding down yet. Because really, that is like one of the main villains is killed, and then there's just these lackeys that are trying to stick yeah. out. And then that happens again. Oh, I forgot about the boat scene. <laughs> there's the boat scene that happens again. The boat scene. Yeah, where bon they're they're going to. To Venice on the boat, like they steal the boat. Oh wow, I forgot about that. And then Bond kicks the barrels out and shoots them with a flare gun. Okay, uh, even though I think the movie should have ended by that point, I, I fucking loved that. Wait, I like that scene too. And there's like people that are legitimately on fire for the stunts. Like, really? Yeah, I think yeah. Cut out the helicopter scene and the boat scene. Honestly, you, you could have had them earlier in the film because I I do like those scenes, but I think you're right that they came at a time when you wanted the film to have already ended yeah which is why i think the slightly more slightly lower key death of rosa club is works better I, i'm surprised she ends up taking things into her own hands um, like really said, but oh, she's desperate she like yeah, she's at her last exactly she's her last. because the, the scene where she's got to basically tell blowfield that i i failed you see the shoes and the blade come out and it's like oh yeah well somebody's dead and in in like it implies that she's gonna get killed yeah. and then oh, obviously she's sweating death and constantly like exactly. oh my plan was false she's the one who you know screwed up yeah and then they subvert and it's like no she gets one more chance and she screws it so then the, the, the show what happens with Cleb is the maid and then Tatiana's big arc she shoots her <laughs> yeah big arc I mean, was she ever gonna like? Did you ever think she would ever shoot Bond? I mean, I didn't. There's no way. I mean, no, but obviously she's okay, gonna kill. Okay, so I, I didn't, and I was really confused as to why there was even a question. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Really, it yeah. reminded me of those scenes in movies where you've got somebody who looks like somebody else, and it's like, which one do I shoot? Which one do I shoot? And Bond has Cleb up against the wall with a chair, and she's like kicking, like she's like going crazy. I like that. Yeah, it, it really shows how absolutely just desperate and at the end, you know, of her tether yeah. she is. That's the the actual the fourth the fourth climactic ending, <laughs> and then we have uh, the another rehash scene from Doctor No, which is the ending on the boat, the happy ending. But and then Bond is looking at the sex tape. Where does he find the sex tape? I don't told climb? you. In the in the background of the film, he's been making so many copies of it. <laughs> uh, so he's looking at the sex tape, and then they throw it over the thing. Yeah, so yeah. I like he, I like he, it more than the Doctor No ending. Yeah, I, I do too. The Doctor No one's a bit odd. I like the idea of the British like um, boat. No, it was CIA Doctor No. Was it okay, American? well, I, I like the idea of the CIA coming and saving him because it was like a, an implication of oh, we we always have to bail him out. Um, mm -hmm. When he, when he gets in over his head. I liked this one because he gets rid of the sex tape that never mattered to the plot as if it never mattered to the plot. Then we have Matt Monroe singing from Russia Will Love, like the actual recorded version. So, and then 
is the credit start? It, 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 I, I don't remember it doing this in Doctor No. I don't think it did, but it teases. It says like something like Bomb returning Goldfinger, um, and, and it actually names all... the next movie. They do that for all of them. Some of them are inaccurate. But... I know you, you've mentioned that to me before. Like, um, isn't uh, License to Kill inaccurate? It doesn't have it on the end of License to Kill. I don't think, but it it's no. Warmer. Okay. The well, the Spy Love uh, Me says Turn and Freeways only, but he ends up showing up in Moonraker because Star Wars. Uh, Let's talk about final opinions, ranking. So I'll give it 9 out of 10 Siamese fighting fish. Really? Yeah. I think I gave Dr. Noah 7, did I? I think. 7.5, because I gave it the same. Christian gave it a 7. Uh, I think, you know, we've already beaten this to death, but it improves on Dr. Noah in every conceivable way. Yeah. The story is tighter. Uh, the villain, I mean, there's more multiple villains, and they're all more interesting than Doctor No. I hate to say, uh, in my um, opinion, I think Connery is more confident in this film than Doctor No. Even though he's great in Doctor No, he just he's perfect, literally pitch perfect in this film. The only thing that really like, keeps it from getting to a ten is the four climaxes. <laughs> yeah. Uh, Tatiana, I don't really understand her motivation sometimes. But I, I think she's an interesting character, and I like that she's really integral to the plot, which is not which is rare for the Bond, Bond women, yeah. really. Uh, locations I love, and Karen Bay, just, he just defaults the movie to at least an eight for me. I just love him yeah. so much. Everything about the sort of Bond machine, the production machine, is better here, because even though it's the same crew, it, it's Terrence Young directing again, there's far fewer jump cuts. The composition of the scenes is much more interesting the lighting is interesting it's just it's not as flat as a lot of the stuff was in dr no the set design is amazing as is dr no uh but you, know, you can just really tell there's a bigger budget and they're not so pressed you know they have the, they have more freedom to be creative and i think it yeah. shows it makes a better film overall so nine out of ten siamese fighting fish from me okay so my rating is eight gold sovereigns out of ten i i want to give it a nine but literally, that the part where they go to that whole festival and the cat mm. fight around that area is where I had to take a break and come back to it because it, it it just does not matter to the movie at all. But then then the fight after is really good, so it sort of redeems it. The rest of the movie, though, absolutely great. I mean, there's not much more I can say that won't echo what you said, other than that it it just improves upon everything Doctor No set out to do. It, it's a sequel in like every single sense. The production was insanely good. The, the characters were great. And like you said, I liked how they utilized the Bond girl in the plot. But yeah, I I enjoyed it a lot. I, I, the four climaxes obviously <laughs> I mean <laughs> they the the scenes are good. Yeah yeah I agree. They're I, not, they're good. They're just not needed. Yeah, I, I think the movie could have possibly benefited from a bit of reshuffling. Like a few scenes and maybe cutting some stuff out, even if it's good, just to make it a lot more tighter. Because it already is a really tight film and everything's sort of really cohesive and efficient. Did you notice I mentioned about how just the sort of direction and everything is a bit more less sort of choppy and by the books, a bit more oh, sort yeah, of definitely. flavorful? It, so it's the same director? Yeah, it's Terrence Young, yeah. Okay, yeah, he's definitely improved, and he's clearly in some sort of... Like, he's, he's got his groove, if that makes sense. Well, like, I think, not necessarily he improved, but I think, if you think about Dr. No, and there were so many jump cuts we were talking about that we hated. Yeah. That, I mean, that right there is, you know, they couldn't go back and reshoot something because they didn't have the budget or something. Yeah. But they did for this. You know, so there's... Oh, so, so you think it's a case of not necessarily improved, but he, he's got the ability to sort of translate his vision more because he's not restricted by budget and I, stuff i think it's a few different things i think first of all they didn't know they were directing a bond film for the first time yeah the doctor now and they didn't know what to do so they were testing the waters that went really well it was very successful they can go with that pretty much but sort of spice it up a little bit and they can have a little bit more flair you know because when you, you don't want to do a slightly you don't want to be like sort of not auteurish but you don't want to be super pretentious i would but this movie isn't like yeah, that but you yeah. want to have your, a super set style for the first movie because if it doesn't work then you have to yeah. double back you, on you it. don't want to lock you know? yourself into exactly yeah 
I'm excited to see how it sort of continues from here. Um, Because so far, I mean, I've loved both these movies, but this one is such an improvement. So I yeah I'm, I'm we excited. We both love Doctor No. So we both gave Doctor No the same the same rating. Yeah, we so both gave it a seven point five. And even though I I guess in my case it's only point five above what I gave it. it I mean I it is still obviously a high rating. I think they're both great, and this one's obviously amazing in its own right. Uh, the next film is Goldfinger, probably yep. the most iconic Bond film next to Thunderball. Different director, so things are different in Goldfinger, uh, and it's a bit more laid back. But we'll, you know, I won't spoil anything for you. It's a, it's a totally different vibe from Russia with Love, and it has its own ups and downs. But that's for a discussion for another time. <laughs>